Hi guys, Gilliam Elliott here with an educational video on medical tourism. Today, I wanted to cover patient waiver contracts and what you should put in your patient waiver agreement. So the reason why I chose this topic is because our template contracts are, are one of our most popular programs uh, that we have. And so people reach out to us on a daily basis asking about different contracts, asking about what they should put in their contracts and what our contracts have in them. So um, I want to go over some key points that you should have in your patient waiver agreement, because over the years I've seen different patient waiver agreements from different medical tourism companies, and I've seen things left out that are really important and that could really cost, uh, that could really cost the company down the road. And so I wanna make sure that you don't fall victim to leaving these key points out of your patient waiver agreements, or if you're looking to purchase our patient waiver agreements and our contracts, just to let you know what will be in those patient waiver agreements and in the contract. So the first thing you wanna make sure you have in there is a clause that lets the client know the risk and the benefits of getting treatment abroad. So this is just spelling out to the client all the, uh, all the possible factors in medical tourism, the risk, and letting them know that you can't make any guarantees uh, when, uh, when facilitating a trip abroad. Um, the next thing you wanna make sure is that you let the client know or a clause letting the client know you will not be providing any medical advice and the information that you'll be providing them is education in nature. So this, just letting, this is just letting the patient know that you aren't a medical provider, um, you don't have any medical providers on staff, and it really just puts a clear distinction between the overseas healthcare provider and you as a medical tourism facilitator. Because sometimes the patients, they'll think that the facilitator and the hospital are one and the same, and that's not the case. You're a different entity. So if something goes unplanned, um, you want to let them know who's responsible for what. Also, another clause you want to make sure you have in your patient waiver agreement is letting the patient know that they, by signing the contract, waive the right to sue you and your directors of your company. So this is just letting them, now obviously they can still uh, pursue you, um, but it makes it less likely that they'll prevail because they have a binding contract stating uh, that they waive the right to sue you as a medical tourism facilitator. And so these are just some really, uh, really basic things you want to have in your patient waiver agreement. But these are things that I've seen people leave out of their patient waiver agreement and their contracts in general. And so I want to make sure that you guys are including this in your uh, patient waiver agreements. And also something else, make sure that you don't try to do these on your own. Always make sure that you hire a professional that has knowledge of medical tourism and that has a background in medical tourism. But these are things that you want to make sure that are in the agreement. And if you uh, are thinking about getting our patient waiver agreement, these are just some basic things that are in there. As you can imagine, they have so many other clauses in there, but these are just some really fundamental things uh, that are included in these patient waiver agreements. So in any case, thank you guys for watching this short video and I will see you in the next one. Thanks a lot.